Hello again, uh, this is yet another Wilson 18 tutorial for Ubuntu server. In the last few videos in the players we've, we've covered a lot of things. We've talked about uh, the installation of the operating system, giving it a static IP address, it, using a web interface for the databases which is PHP my admin, keeping the Ubuntu server up to date, setting up a SSH connection and SSH server on the operating system so you can connect into it without actually having the server right in front of you and in the last one which is one of the most important ones we've done is setting it up so you can host multiple sites on the same server which is very useful if you ask me you, you, it means you can actually start hosting for other people if you need to or say so you've got quite a few different sites you need to manage or different subdomains as well it's, it manages everything for you so it's quite useful but probably one of the most important things what we need to be able to do which I haven't talked about yet is the, getting the files from your machine onto the server so you can actually start hosting and what we'll be doing in this video is setting up a virtual FTP accounts and this will all be managed by a MySQL database so you can you can create your own PHP scripts or your own software to actually talk to the database and add these users automatically instead of relying on the users to already be there because normally in Linux you need to have the an, an actual user on the system to set up FTP but this it does it virtually and you can do it all through a database so it's quite good there will be a lot of writing in this so I would recommend connecting to it via something like putty through SSH so, so you can actually copy and paste it in I will be doing that just to save a bit of time and I will be trying to explain what everything does and so you can actually have a look at this and have it in front of you um, I'll tell you where that guide is if you wanted to have a look at it so if you open up the an internet browser and go to wilson18.com and then go to the how to section If you then scroll down, there's a Ubuntu server, and go to the guide saying how to create virtual FTP accounts for your website. So if you click that, it should open up a, a guide sort of explaining the different procedures you go through. It's got plenty of images on there, and it's got code snippets so you can just copy and paste it in, or click the button there to copy it. and it just saves you having to write anything out and it, it means that you you don't make many mistakes that way it's very difficult to make a mistake so I will be for following through this as well so it's quite useful to have a look at I, li I, li I like this way of doing it because I haven't found any reliable ways to do this to be honest the only way I've been able to find this is from opening, opening about a hundred different tabs up and searching through loads of different websites but I have actually got most of this from um, this link here so it, it makes sure you go ahead and check that out because it's a great guide I've just reworded it and added a few pictures in there to make it a little bit simpler so this is all their work so don't go give me any credit for it But so as I said I'll be using an SSH connection to my server so I can do this just to make it a bit easier so if you open up whichever program you're going to be using, I think the best is Putty, just because it's it's free and you can you can run it off a USB or whatever. And you, you'll have to be asked to put in a host name or an IP address, so you can do that by typing it in, obviously, and specifying the port. If you followed my video, you would have changed it to a different port, just for security. So make sure you go and add that in. and once that is open you should see the following screen asking you to log in and once you've got that there you can log in so once you're in um, we're, we're going to be trying making a, a little bit faster again so the way we're going to do that is we're going to be switching to the root user so it just means that we don't have to type in um, bleh, sorry about that it just means that we don't have to type in sudo for every command so to do that 
we are going to type in sudo and then su and then give you a password I think I'll type that in wrong that time no I didn't, right, <laughs> so yeah so we've typed in the password so now we're using it as a super user so what we need to do now is install the program so to do that we need to type in apt get install ftpd right sql so um yeah that's it <laughs> sorry about that um again copy and paste it just making things a little bit faster so it's apt get install pure ftpd mysql and then once you type that in click enter you'll be asked if you want to continue so just click yes and once that's finished installing we will need to um, create a group and we'll then go ahead and create a user and add that to the group so what we need to do is we need to um, give it a user ID which is free on your machine so I'm just going to give it 2001 and um, I don't know where I got that from it's what was suggested in the, pre in the guide that I said I was um, reading from so to add a group we type in group add and then hyphen d and then the id and then the name of the group so this is going to be ftp group and the next thing we need to do is actually add a, a user so to do that we type in user add and then U and then the ID again S and then bin false D bin null <laughs> see and then the name of the user there and the group and FTP user um, if, if you don't really understand that then you, you probably need to um, have a look at the guide because just trying it's a bit easier trying to understand it from that so once you've done that, click enter, and that creates a user, and then adds it to the group. So the next thing we need to do is we're going to be doing this through PHP MyAdmin. So we can type in the IP address, and then PHP MyAdmin, and then we need to log in. So once we're going to be once we're in here, we need to um, create a database for MySQL uh, for the program to use. And to do that, we're going to be going into the SQL here and typing this in. So what this does is it creates a database and then the database name, which is pure FTPD. And once we do that, click go, and that should create the database so you can see it there and the next thing we're going to be doing is um, creating a user to actually interact with this database and giving it a password and seeing where it can log in from so to do that we need to type in So, right, sorry about that. Um, so what we need to do is we need to type in this. Again, copy and paste makes it a little bit easier. So um, gr grant select, insert, update, delete, create, and drop on for pure FTPD. So that's um, saying it, these are the type of things it can do. So it can select, insert, update, delete, create, um, whatever. And it's saying that's where it can log into. So it's ftpd at localhost identified by and then your password so whatever you want to choose as a password for this user needs to go here so you can just call whatever so I'm going to be um, changing it to password in the guide I've done um, I left it as your password here just so that you can see where you need to edit it but in this video I'll just change the password just so you can see that you do need to change something so you type that in and then you click go 
and then the next thing you need to type in is it's basically the same thing but in this time it's localhost.localdatabase so again add the password again make sure it's the same make sure everything else is correct and then click go and the last thing is flush privileges this just updates everything and we've done that click go again so now you've, you've created a a user that can actually access this database and it's the only thing it can do so we know that you, you can't access this from the outside world or anything like that so it's pretty secure you can actually add all them together as well um, in the same SQL query but I just separate it out just so you got a rough idea of what I was doing so if you are here we now need to create the data, uh, the table in this database so to do this again copying and pasting to make it a lot easier so as you can see there's quite a bit we don't want to make any mistakes in this so I'll try and explain it so we're saying we want to create one with user and then we're saying it's various characters that can be um, it can basically be any character but it's 16 characters long it can't be left blank and yeah <laughs> and then the status it's going to be an enum so that means you can only choose between 0 and 1 Password is various characters, can only be 64 characters long. User ID is various characters, 11 characters long. GID, various character, 11 characters long. DR, which is a directory, various characters, can only be 128 characters long. Um, upload bandwidth and uh, download bandwidth are only small integers, so it can only be 5 characters long. Um, comment, just basically text field. And um, the IP address is various characters again. Quote size and file size, small integer and just normal integer. And I'm saying the primary key is the user, and the unique key is also the user. So once you've done that, click go, and you'll see that you now have a table here. Don't worry about that, by the way. That's fine. So we now have a table there, and when um, we get the program from running, it'll, re it'll read the users from there, so it, it's quite good. So again, as I said, you can use um, a PHP script to read uh, to add stuff into the database, so you can really, it's quite easy to automate FTP users. Right, the next thing we need to do um, is if we go back into Putty, we're going to be editing the um, the database file so that it knows where to look for the database and the first thing we're going to be doing is just creating a copy of it so if anything goes wrong we've got a, a say, copy of it so to do that we type in cp which copies and then the location of the file which is etc pure ftpd and then database and then mysql.com and then we're going to be saving it to there and then we'll just underscore original just so that we know that was the original file and click enter and that will copy the new file and then we type in cat dev null and then we do that and the next thing we're going to be doing is editing the mysql config file so let's type that in, you type in nano, sorry, you missed that bit. Uh, let's see if we can get back up there. Yeah, nano and then etc pure ftpd db and then mysql.conf. And in here you can see that the file is blank. So this is again where copy and pasting comes hand handy because there's quite a lot to copy. So if you paste that in, we can make the alterations we need to. So, if we go up here, right, um, if for any reason you're using a database on a different host, then you can add that there. 
and um, you can just edit this bit out and put your own thing in and again if you're using a different port add it there the username if again you changed it there then you can change it there but the main thing we need to change is the password bit here so again I said I was just gonna do it with the word password but again making alterations you need to here so once you've done that, do Control O to save it, and press Enter, and then do Control X. And we need to do a couple of other things to create a few of the config files. But to do so, we need to type in echo, and then yes. So it's going to put in the file the word yes, and then the file path, which is that. And then there's another one we need to do, which what this um, file can do this one next is it's allowing it to create um, the home directory so if in the database you put um, the directory um, that doesn't exist then it will create it for you so you don't have to worry about any errors there and the next thing we need to do is restart the program just so it can start working so to do that we type in etc and then init.d and then pure ftpd mysql and then restart so that will then start restart the file and it should work fine and what we're going to be doing now is creating a user in the database just to test to make sure it works fine so we'll go back onto phpMyAdmin and then go to the sql again and paste that in and what this is going to do is it's going to insert into and then ftpd which is the, da the table name and then these are the different files we it, the different ones we'll be inserting it into with the values of so the username is going to be test1 the 1 means it's going to be active and the password is going to be password but it's going to be md5 hash to make the password secure and the user group and user id are going to be 2001 that's the directory we're going to be inserting it into and we'll we'll change these to zero um, but what these are is it's the upload and download speed limit so if you don't want them to have a particularly fast connection then you can limit that or you can type in zero and that will make it unlimited and that's that little asterisk there that's saying um, which IP address they're allowed to log in from if you want them to log in from any which you would really um, unless you're trying to do an internal one then whatever you can just add it there but if you would want any IP address to log in then you do the asterisk and then the bit where it says 50 um, what you need to put in there it, that's how much space you want them to have access to so that's in megabytes so 50 megabytes and the zero is how many files they're allowed to have so maybe you only want them to be able to upload 10 files so then you put 10 in there but if you want them to have unlimited then it's zero, zero. and once you've done that click go and that user should have been created so we need to test this so to do that we need to open up a FTP client so I'm going to be using FileZilla because I find it's the best to be honest um, so the host is the IP address of the server username is going to be test oh, I'm spell it right test1 make sure capital letters and everything like that are right and the password is password and the port is 21 or 20 but either way it's you can just leave it blank and it'll automatically get it and that login you can see that's the um, default HTML page as well we did so we know that that works and you can try transferring things to and from if you want but I know that it works so I'm not going to bother with that and you can also delete files as well and you won't be able to download this file here but if you actually open that file in Ubuntu 
you it'll actually tell you how many files they've got as well as the space used so that's quite handy as well and that's how it limits the files in it so we when it comes to actually adding users into your database you can do this and create your own PHP file or a, fo a program in um, Visual Basic or something like that, it's up to you really how you do it or you can do it through PHP My Admin and how we do this, uh, we can go to the FTPD and then go to the insert you type in the username here, so if you want to change it to user the password, you type in whatever password you want and it's important that you actually use the function and then md5 and what that's going to do is it's going to hash your password if you do it then it, it won't work, it, you won't be able to log in the user id needs to be the 2001 again we need to get rid of the minus because it won't work same for the gid the directory is where you want them to have access to. So, um, actually, I'm going to create this username for the test2 because that's the other um, website we've got hosted on here. So, you can do that, and then the directory is going to be var and then www and then test2. If you want to limit the bandwidth, um, upload and download, you can add it in here, or you can leave it as unlimited. If you want to add any comments for that particular user, then you can do there. And if you want to set a, num a limit to the the um, space they can have, or the number of files, then you can add them to in there. And if you click go, then they should then be able to log in, and that will be good. So again, um, all this is on my website, so um, have a look on the link below, and hopefully that should explain it a little bit better than I have to and hit done here, because um, I know this is quite a long video, and I thought it would be a bit easier if you just had something to look through. But um, I really hope this helps, because I couldn't find much which was useful for this, so um, I, re I really hope it has helped you. And if it hasn't, then please leave some comments below and I can maybe try and help you or I can maybe try and point you through to some other guides that I've found, if you'd like. But if you have liked it, then um, please make sure to like and subscribe. And again, make sure you check out the um, original post on ubuntu4humans.blogspot.co.uk and show them your support there. So yeah, thank you for watching, please like and subscribe, and check out the other videos.